Hey traders, this is Champion Trader Kevin Davey, and I'm here today to share with you some simple strategies I created from some of my favorite trading books. So let's get started. So I love getting ideas from trading books. And I've gotten quite a few systems that I've created from books that I've read. So what I'm going to share with you today are three different strategies that I got from some of my favorite trading books. Now in the description you can read all about those favorite books because I have a few different lists with my favorite psychology books, my favorite idea books, my favorite algo books. You can look and read about all my favorite books and you can also sign up to get the code that's in TradeStation format along with the workspace. So don't feel like you need to write everything down that I'm going to say because you can get it by just signing up at my website. So let's begin. First off, you got to remember that you must trade at your own risk. So just because I'm showing some equity curves, you know, don't think, hey, Kevin says these are good, so I should just trade them. You know, trade at your own risk. And the other thing is, test for yourself. Verify what I get. Maybe you'll get something different. It's always a good idea to test for yourself anything that you're going to put into the market. And the reason for that is because it'll help give you confidence that, you can still trade it even when you run into some drawdowns because I guarantee you probably are going to run into drawdowns sooner or later. Now I'm showing results before running through all the steps of my strategy factory process. That's the process I use to develop strategies. So I'm just showing some of the beginning steps but you should be able to take the strategy and play around with it and maybe you'll come up with something good. But I did not include things like walk forward testing or Monte Carlo simulation, which are things I do to develop a strategy. I just didn't include them here. So let's take a look at the first book. The first book is Trading Systems by Yackel and Tomasini. This was a great book I read a number of years ago on system development. And one of the systems that they gave in the book was called Luxor which actually they say they got from TradeStation, which was Omega Research at the time. So it's a pretty old system. So I took what they had and I actually, quote unquote, riffed off it. And riff means, hey, I made my own changes and came up with my own style and came up with my own strategy. So here's the code that I used. And what it does, basically, it figures out a fast trend or a you know long trend and a short term trend and the way they did it in Luxor was by moving averages and using moving averages to tell if you're in an uptrend or downtrend I'm using simple momentum so that's a little bit different and so the rules are pretty simple if I'm in a long trend well then I just buy at the high of the current bar plus a certain amount on a stop and if the next bar hits it, I'll be long. Vice versa for the shorts. So it's pretty simple. I also have a switch in there to possibly exit early. So if I'm long and all of a sudden the long trend disappears, I'll exit my long. And I left that as a switch of something I wanted to test. So altogether I had three variables or three inputs that I wanted to optimize. And there were under 100 iterations that I used, and I tested it on a whole bunch of different markets. I think 40 different markets, a whole bunch of different bar sizes. I used a tool that students in my Platinum Strategy Factory workshop get, a software tool. It's called Multiop. It allows you to do a lot of testing quickly, uh, much more quickly than you would just using TradeStation and changing chart symbols and that type of thing. And I've just shown here some of the good cases. There's a whole bunch of cases that were pretty good where 
70, 75, 80, 90 percent, even 100 percent of the iterations were profitable. And that's a good sign of robustness. Now, it's not the only test I use, but it does show there's some robustness here. So what I used for this example, I picked copper and 1440-minute bars, which are basically daily bars. And I ran it with that. Here's an example of what a couple trades look like. Now, I didn't pick the optimum case to show you. I just picked an example case. So there's cases that are better than this, and I'm sure there's cases that are worse. But this at least gives you an idea of what the strategy does. And here's the equity curve. If you look at 2007 to about 2020 as in sample, that's in the white. And then the out of sample data I did not touch to test this is in the blue. And so you can see it's far from a finished strategy, but still it's pretty good and it's pretty simple. Let's move on to the next one. The next one was a book called Beating the Financial Futures Market by Art Collins. And Art has some really cool things that he does with building strategies. One of them is he has biases. So for example, if a close is above a moving average, that's a long bias. If, it, if the close is below a moving average, it's a short bias. So I kind of took that idea and again, took his core idea and then created my own biases to create my own strategy. And the code for that looks like this. This is all trade station format again, but you should be able to kind of figure out what I'm doing. I actually have six different biases here. So the first one's a 10 bar momentum. The second one's a 60 bar momentum. The third one is, like I just described, the close above the average close over the last 20 bars. Then there's, uh, if a short moving average is above a long, longer term moving average, that's a bias. RSI and also did a, a stochastic type one where it looks at where the close is relative to the range of the bar. So all those are biases, either long or short. And if enough of them add up above a certain threshold, then I'll buy the next bar. And if enough of them are on the short side, I'll sell short. And that's it. Pretty simple, right? So again, I ran it through 40 some uh, different markets, whole bunch of different bar sizes. And again, there's quite a few markets where it looked really good. And I just picked unleaded gas, 1440 minute bar uh, at random. I could have picked a whole bunch of other ones. See, there's a lot that aren't daily bars that are on this list. But uh, in this case, with the unleaded gas, I ran six iterations with the threshold variable. It was what I optimized. And all six made money, which is nice. It kind of shows some robustness. Here's an example of some trades. These look like longer term trades compared to the last system we saw where every day is represented by one bar. So you might be in a trade for 10, 20, 30 bars. Um, it's a slightly longer term one, but it does seem to catch some good trends. And again, this isn't the optimum case. It's just an example. Here's what that equity curve looks like. Again, there's some big drawdowns. It's not perfect. It makes money out of sample, but this probably isn't a finished strategy as is. You wouldn't be able to withstand these drawdowns more than likely, but it does make a fair amount of profit. So that's kind of nice. The third book that I looked at was The Universal Principles of Successful Trading by Brent Penfold. This is a great book, and if you've never read it, I suggest you read it. There's a lot of good information on some different topics here. For this one, in the book, Brent mentioned the turtle strategy. So I just went and created a modified version of this classic strategy. So this strategy is really pretty simple. I have three inputs that I'm optimizing. And it buys the highest high of a certain number of bars on the stop, sells short, with that same number of bars and then it exits with a faster or a smaller number of bars. So 
You could think of it, for example, as buying a 20 bar high, exiting that long on a 10 bar low. That's the way I describe this system. And there's a stop loss. That's also something that I've optimized. But it's a pretty simple system. I ran 60 or so iterations with this. And again, over many markets, it looks like it works pretty good and over a lot of time frames. Now I just picked the Nikkei index, which a lot of people don't trade, and I did the 14, 40 minute bars. I could have picked any of these to show you as an example. I just wanted to show you an example. Here's some of the trades. You can see it gets stopped out quite a bit, and it's not the optimum case again, but at least gives you a sense of what it's doing. And here's the out of sample equity curve along with the in sample in the white. And again, it's probably not something you'd want to trade right off the bat, but it could be a good start. So you could actually take all these core strategies I've just given you and do your own testing and put them on your own markets. And that might work very well for you. Okay, so those are three systems I came up with from three of my favorite trading books. And if you want the code and the TradeStation workspace, just go over to the description. It'll tell you how to do it. And the big point here, trading books can give you some great ideas. And you might not use exactly what they're doing, but if you notice on some of those, especially the one by Tomasini, they didn't use an original idea. They took somebody else's idea and probably modified it. That's a good way to develop trading systems. Start with something else or that somebody else created and then go from there. The big key is you just have to test everything and you have to test it properly. Most people don't test properly. That's the thing you got to keep in mind. Please, if you like this video, leave a comment. Let me know if you had any success with this strategy or let me know some of the books that you've had success with. And please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber already, please hit the subscribe button. I'm Champion Chair Kevin Davey. Thanks for watching.